hate puppies. It's a good podcast. I feel threatened. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Inside the Pallet House. I changed it up one word there. I saw that. (laughs) How are you all doing today? Glad to have you back for another week here at Inside the Pallet House. Well, I'm glad to be here. I like doing this on a weekend day. It gives me a little more opportunity to uh, do what I want to do. Just like drink drink beer. It's weird. Daytime shows are cool. It's always nice. It's weird, though, that typically when we do daytime shows, there's like coffee here because it's in the a.m. Yep. This is yeah. like afternoon, Early day evening. drinking, which is uh, always nice. I do like day drinking. Have we talked about coffee? I think we have, but like, do you have any of those services or do you just get pods at the store? I just do pods now because I got my wife one of those like espresso, Nespresso machines. George Clooney. For, yeah, basically yeah, yeah. fell into the Clooney trap. For sure. You know that's what sold him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good enough for Clooney, good enough for us. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's frothy. Yeah. <laughs> Story of my life. But she was like, in, she fell in love with, with those things when we were over in Italy. She like always wanted espressos, and I was like, I could tolerate them. I kind of like American coffee, like a big old cup of coffee. I like that more than like a little shot of coffee. But I respect the little pod. It's I cool. I do think that the... English got the be- I think I've mentioned this before got the better side of that coin with the, the tea, tea thing. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I feel like I don't know how to properly do tea, and there's so many different flavors. Yeah, there's a million, and none of them would, like tell you anything. Yeah, you're like Earl Grey. What the hell is that? Right. English breakfast. I don't know what yeah. any of these words Ray mean. Ray. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't quite understand tea. I think you can make tea out of anything too, right? right? Like as long as you're steeping leaves, you can call it tea. Now there are tea leaves, but then like. Anything else? Mint. Yeah, you can mint teas if you need to. So. Yeah, but I just did my first my first tea like over Christmas. Yeah, where like the wife like booked some tea and I was like, oh fuck, okay, I'm gonna go do tea and like sat down and like they had like a list. It was like calling out all the notes. I was like, where oh, was this? The Jefferson downtown. Oh, okay. And so I was like, I want to try that tea. And then they came out and it was like boatloads of little sandwiches and like cakes. And I was like. Okay, I could get behind this. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's a full on just finger food meal and like a tea. I can tolerate that. But yeah. tea was actually good. I'll give you that. It was like so many different options. I was like, huh. There's coffee's coffee. There's right. some, there's a store at the mall that sells tea. Like a Tivana or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it's called. And I've been in there once and like sampled some different stuff. It's really cool. Yeah, we we definitely don't do that here. We right. No. The Brits are like all in on, on For tea. Sure. And it's not. Well, a does bad coffee idea. have more caffeine? Is that why people? I don't think so. I think, I think it would come down to the, the tea, right? Yeah. Like some teas are pretty Caffeine, jack you up. Yeah, for Stout. sure. But coffee. So what's is the, like, so what has made coffee coffee in this world? Just in America, our world, I think. But coffee is like one of the number one sellers, you know, worldwide nowadays. Yeah. So I mean, it definitely. It's out there. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean everyone I mean, clearly. Everyone likes uppers, and people that drink coffee are funny about it. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, don't talk to me before I've had my coffee. If you say that to me, I don't like you yeah. immediately. But I would imagine the tea people are the same way. I mean, that's how they gotta be getting their caffeine in the morning. Yeah. yeah, tea people are probably really a lot worse in a lot of ways. Like, uh, yeah. I'm not drinking that. Yeah, like a wine person, you know. Don't but then co- coffee people are like that too, right? Like, oh, I don't drink. Folgers, you know, I have to have, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'll drink any old coffee. Like, I, wa- I was at, ooh, this is an interesting story. So Jacob, for the first time yesterday, got his very first Krispy Kreme donut. First time? Yeah. I How has he made it First warm years. or first ever? First ever. Was it warm? It was warm. <laughs> oh, he's chasing oh, the dragon yeah, for the rest yeah, of his yeah, life now. Right. <laughs> yeah, we were at lunch with the, uh, some family friends today, and the wife was like, Sorry, it's all downhill from here. Yeah. Yeah. Once you've had that. <laughs> yeah. It's just so true. You haven't taken but, them up there to watch them make them and stuff? Because uh, it's Why awesome. would I venture towards Chippenham from where I live? Well, There's no that's reason. That's true. It's a hike. Cool. We're, we're legitimately coming back from the car show and on the way home because we've been saying we got to get to Krispy Kreme. Car and, show and donuts? That's and a hell of a Jake day. Jake was like, we should go buy Krispy Kreme. Is that nearby? And I'm like, <laughs> it actually is. Let's do that. So I brought that up because I've never tried their coffee. I hear it's pretty good. I assume it's good. I've had yeah. it. It's it's coffee. I mean, yeah. it's not. Yeah, I mean, I've had it. Dunkin' Donuts is like my favorite coffee. Yeah. 
if you if you like Dunkin' Donuts coffee, then you're just a regular coffee drinker. Like right. that's uh, like donut shop coffee is damn yeah. good. I'm yeah. never gonna be like some bougie coffee person. Right. I'm like, ooh, I is like that chocolate nuts? But I've heard that there's yeah. some amazing stuff you can get coffee wise, and that's kind of where I want to like understand and figure out. I definitely. Like if there's some dope ass flavors or brands out there that I'm missing out on. I feel like I need to know. I mean, that. you've been to Jamaica, yeah, right? like that bulletproof yeah. coffee and all that. But, stuff but I feel you like bulletproof about? is just extra strong. Okay. Well, I want like some kind of dope flavor, flavor of yeah. some sort. When you were in Jamaica, did you ever try that no, Blue Mountain no, no, coffee? No, no, no. You messed up there. Really? Yeah, that stuff. Like you can actually taste. It's like this is phenomenal. Really? Like, something about it was just a level up. Huh? I loved it. That stuff's expensive, though. Really? Oh my god! But yeah, you. I think you're you're probably Anything spot that on. is good is expensive, right? Did you get it right near the beach? That's the only place to get it. For sure. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. If I wasn't from Jamaica, why would I wear this hot? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love that movie. I know. Oh, my God. I watched on my Facebook feed that scene where they just get grilled and Jim Brewer's talking about what snacks they should get. Funyuns, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. We need water. Lots, <laughs> lots of water. Of water. <laughs> Dude, I went and saw that movie on opening night really? when I was in college. And that was that was hilarious getting in that line. Like yeah. everybody oh, in that line was just a mess. And it was like a midnight showing. And it you're was, with your people. Like and it watching was, a movie in a group setting with like minded people is absolutely is awesome. Especially in college. Dude, that's yeah, that was a rowdy movie theater. Yes. Like everyone was talking and laughing. It was like it was a very different experience. It's like when sure. I saw Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. They're making that again, you know. That? I know. Oh, the God. what's the deal? It, which on maybe that. one of the best movies. It is and so. Dude, you will not find a movie with a better cast. Yes, like the A list oh, yeah. actors and actresses that are in that movie. Yeah. is next level. People when that, forget. I mean, I remember who I was with and just sitting there during that opening line. When the mom starts cussing and a little too, and they just start singing that fuck, fuck, fuck mother, song. Mother, fuck, mother, mother, fuck, fuck, mother, fuck, mother, fuck, <laughs> noinch, noinch, noinch. Yeah. So I just lost. I what's mean, the deal on, oh, yeah. on number two? Or when, <laughs> this movie is just hilarious. Fucking George Carlin's like, you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I just heard that uh, I saw a promotion on, again, my Facebook feed, some sponsored ad with Kevin Smith trying to generate. You know, like so it hasn't been made yet. No, no, no. no. They're okay. just generating funds or something. I love when they it. get up with Affleck and they're oh, like, yeah. what the, the fuck is the, what the, fuck is the internet? Yeah. And he breaks it down for him. Yeah. He that was a bomb in Phantoms. You yeah. a bomb in Phantoms. <laughs> Phantoms like a motherfucker. <laughs> Did I blow your mind this morning when I <laughs> told you that currently uh, Matt Damon is two years older Dude, you than, did blow my mind. than Robin was, Williams was in Good Will Hunting right now? Like, think about how old. It's not that mind blowing because Good Will Hunting is super old. But didn't you think of Robin Williams as like an old man? An old man, and now yeah. you don't think of Matt Damon as an old man, and he's two years older than Robin Williams was in that movie. I, I yeah. see what you're saying. I get it. Like, I think that's partly because Robin Williams was dealing with stuff that you know we didn't know about, so he was probably showing his age. Well, that, and they wanted him to look like that. Yeah. So he had his old. Uh, there was beard no makeup out. in that. Yeah. That was the natural look. Yeah. And was I mean that movie's always or lately has been on heavy rotation. And whenever I've had a few drinks and that movie's on, I have to sit there and watch it. And it came on last night, and it was like the beginning. I was like, I'm just going to watch this, and ended up watching damn near the whole With thing. With commercials? Uh, yeah, I think so. That's the worst. Because you know, you know you just added an hour of Tide commercials to your life, and you're like, yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to log in. So good. You pause it, go do something else, just hoping to get enough buffer there. We can get through some of those things. And Damon and Affleck were so young when they wrote that. I, I mean, know. it's crazy. That's insane. You're like, what have I done with my life? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're putting out one of the best podcasts in the country. Yeah, but yeah, it was developed when you were like almost 40. Yeah. They were like 16 or 17. <laughs> they, were, they were kids. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna age discriminate right now, if you're gonna start, start just pulling this shit, then I'm oh, done. I'm an ageist. I yeah, totally, I, see that. I yeah. totally forgot. I t this wasn't even on the board. Have y'all heard that there's weight uh, weight privilege now? Yeah, that people are getting like bullied on what on the internet for like you're skinny, so you have weight privilege. I don't want don't talk to me like just foolishness like this. Like you can actually shame people for their 
for not being overweight now. Yes. But that one's more arguably a choice than than other how afflictions, dare you right? Say yeah, that. how dare oh, you? Oh, don't start. You two are both dying. I can't believe you did You're that. Actually, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm the bad guy now. We're going to sit here I'm and finish outraged. this podcast. Yeah. With and this? then we're going to eat a thing of ice cream. Yeah. You know what, Fatty? Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you fucking would. <laughs> well, of course, everybody's like, you know, oh, it's my genetics, you know, da 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 On some level, yeah. uh, sure, there's a little of that, but I think that one's a choice. Like, I'm willing to hear the arguments of you were born into this, so then, you know, I, I got you have privilege because you weren't born. In- I was not born fat, and then I yeah. just kept moving towards fat. That's how that, that's how yeah. that works. So don't no, give I me this it. weight just, privilege. That's, yeah. I'm, it's I'm hilarious. I mean, privilege is... To, to assume anyone has any privilege, I mean, you could go, if you went down that road, I mean, then everybody on some level has, I mean, you could really, it's a slippery slope with that. like For sure. And then if you're going to really just put everybody in one category, isn't that the opposite of what we should be doing mm-hmm. in 2019? Yeah, Crazy. it is. Well, I'm not having it. No. Weight privilege, I'm Hell not. Oh, no. Because I've, I've been fat. I've been on the other side of that, so I think I can rightfully speak to it. I remember as a little kid getting made fun of for being fat. So there we go. So now can I can I look at skinny people and be like, you have you don't understand my struggle? Yeah. Even though I'm not the currently struggle fat. is real because I have those demons. I Doesn't was everybody have some demons? I mean, that's what I can't get past. Like, I mean, it's crazy. How dare you? <laughs> It's like Ely privilege. I mean, he's those, got all yeah. the privilege <laughs> rolled up in one. <laughs> all of those newscasters that tell you that you're doing something wrong, yeah, they don't have any privilege. They're perfect. That's right. Jeez. I forget. Yeah. They're immune to that shit. Right. They're newscasters. Thank yeah. God. They're Which, the best. Yeah. It is nice to be immune to everything. Mm-hmm. So you guys know I've been going off on these electric car rants. Like we've been really. You 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 know this. I like I like how you play in though. That's always it's always good. <laughs> Ely's always a, a willing participant in the uh the theater of in the your mind. Nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Theater. You sure you don't drink tea? <laughs> it's pronounced theater. Okay. It's got this one you're not gonna swing me back theater. on. I, I, I do like I've accepted some of your abuse in the past and I've changed certain words, but theater is the proper way to say it. Okay. I can't even say it the other way. Like the theater. That's why you don't do it. <laughs> no, I just I don't even how do you say theater? Yeah, movie theater. Yeah, that's that sounds ridiculous. Yeah. I don't even know why ridiculous, I said Ridiculous, correct, whatever. Oh, theater of the mind. So we were talking about uh I was talking about electric cars though, and I've been I've been still going over it. So these don't have gas engines. No, no. How do they go? Yeah. It's it's interesting that that uh, how long is the extension cord? That is right. that is quite the callback. It's got to be retractable too, because when you come back home, I'm not winding you don't that wanna, thing up. Right, it's a it's a callback to that damn redneck Riviera episode. If people haven't had a chance, I, I had one one slip up four years, one. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> that's yeah. all. That's all I'm counting. You count well. I do. I do. Like you speak, but they. Uh, you know, I've been I've been doing all this research on them still, and now because I did you all that, figured research, out how they go. Yeah, I know how electric motors work. Okay, that's all it is is electric motors. Well, yeah, that's what makes them turn. Yes, you put power in there; it's magnets. Hmm. That's what turns an electric motor. And there's mm-hmm. solar roofs or something. Science. No, you got to plug them in. So. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> He's just slow. He's see what he's doing to me over here he's just just setting up potential pitfalls he's not l- not actually expanding on them he's learning yeah trying yes. to expand my brain yes. motherfucker. Oh, thank you well here's okay. here's a little expansion for you okay so tesla came out obviously and did and did the sedans in a time where sedans are not popular we live in a crossover culture like the vast majority of all the cars that sell right now are crossovers and suvs that's yeah. what people want so when tesla came out with you know a sedan everyone was like that's a that's a bad move. But right. then, lo and behold, they sold like crazy. Now, the number one selling luxury car in the U.S. in eighteen was the Model Three. I mean, what's the difference between a sedan and a crossover anyway? Just ride height and I mean, size inside. I, I guess. think I don't think everybody likes the the crossover so much as like once everyone's once they got so popular that there were so many on the road. Like, you ever ride down the road in a sedan and then get into an SUV or crossover, and you're sitting up higher, you're like, I can't go back to that. It's so funny you just said that because you you made the exact point that I was going to make. I, when people start sitting up higher 
Yeah, you naturally like want that. Yeah. And then when you go back down, you're like, this sucks. Yeah. I need to be back up higher. So yeah. You can't see over that minivan in front of you. Yeah. Or at least feel like you're on par to see what's going on. Right. Yeah. Or you feel like you can get run over by something. Oh, yeah. Try the Miata. Yeah. That's unbelievable in traffic. Yeah, when you, you're, you look left and you you're looking run. at a tire. Right. Because you're so low and that big truck. So you're like, God. That yeah. Miata will get you run down by some dudes for sure. Yeah. No, I'm. Odds of me dying in a really lame hairdresser car are probably pretty, <laughs> Super pretty high. good at this point. Right. Yeah, every It'll time be fabulous I, though when you go out. Yeah, you will. I'd be fabulous regardless how I go out. I Extra up, fabulous I in a Miata. Up. That's a fact. I'm yeah. willing to give you that. Okay. There's no no two ways about that. I mean, you get a little bit more storage in your crossover, but I, I've always liked sedans. I mean, I don't have a problem yeah. with a sedan at all. And they drive like cars now. Like yeah, my I hell, I drive a crossover, and it's like. It drives just like a car, but yeah. I do like sitting up a little higher. Yeah. I, yeah. There's something to be said for it. But they thought Tesla was crazy to, to do that in this day and age because that's not where they were going. But Tesla has always said they're working on the, the pickup truck, which Elon Musk put out something ridiculous like his would be rated to pull 100,000 pounds or something. I'm like, oh, okay. Elon. Yeah, who yeah. needs to do that in a pickup truck? Yeah. yeah, I don't quite understand what he's No one. But I think that's just him trying to put it out there like, Get rid of all those those preconceived notions in your mind that electric's not going to be good in this space. Right. Like, it is going to be able to tow. It's going to be able to go off-road. And ultimately, if instant torque you can get from an electric engine, that probably is going to be pretty badass off-road. For sure. When for you're towing. In, I'm thinking when you're in a moment where you're like, you need to go. Sometimes you get stuck in the mud because you didn't get on it fast enough, and the difference can be that well, second. I'm stuck in the muck. Yeah. yeah. I've definitely had some Jeeps pulled out of muck by bulldozers. That's not a good look. Okay. So, yeah, the car show, they had the pickup truck Jeeps. Oh, did you get to look at it? I did. What did you think of the Gladiator? Um, just Well, I'm not a big Jeep fan, so I was like, oh, there's the pickup truck Jeep, and we kept walking. No, so you didn't spend any time no, in the bed or it anything? It looked like a Jeep with a bed. That's that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. It's a five-foot bed on the back of a Jeep. Yeah. The cool thing is, though, that it opens up in the back, so, like, the bed can open up. Does it really? Your, oh, yeah. does it? That's cool. You mean, like, the back of the Jeep open? Yeah, like, you could, because the top comes off, so, like, you're looking out into the bed. That's kind of cool. That is Like, really when cool. you're in that. So, you, if needed, you could put something bigger than five foot back there. You could. Yeah. Without and the top in it. The way they did it is pretty genius, where the Jeep in the, in the bed has little, like, uh, like points that come up to the exact height of the wheel well that mm-hmm. come out of the bed along the length of it. So you can actually drop like sheep, sheep uh, plywood. And, oh, that's yeah. cool. And put it in there and it'll lay flat. Yeah. Because the wheel well takes up that room and that, yeah. that was like a big concern. And they also rigged it up where the tailgate can come down like a quarter of the way. Yeah. And that also is at the exact height of the wheel well and those little levels. Nice. So you can really lay some stuff That's pretty out. cool. They did some smart stuff yeah. with that, that bed. I'm interested to see that Jeep actually out, out You'll the road. You'll see 45-year-old yeah. soccer moms driving them soon enough. For sure. Yeah. That's going to be <laughs> very Pristine interesting. Pristine condition mm-hmm. with all the bells and whistles. Towing all that stuff. Yeah. And they're coming yeah. out with a diesel next year in it. Are they really? So it'll finally diesel. be able to tow. Yeah. Like what finally... was that? Didn't old Mike send us a link to a V8 one there, a Hemi one they were doing? Oh, my God. You see that? No, like a that, Hellcat motor awesome. in it? That was disgusting. Yeah. They wanted a hundred grand for that Jeep. Really? Yeah. It was it was insane, but it was like Mopar tricked sound out. Like a, like a good idea, it. right? I mean, that's way too high off the ground. Nah, Jeeps are known for their uh, cornering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what Jeeps are known for. Yeah, more than anything. That. So you put a Hellcat in there. What's the problem? Yeah, evasive maneuver. Easy money. Gun it. I wonder if it still tows dog shit. The one with the Hellcat. Yeah. I mean, you've got to get in tow something. It, it would come down to gearing, right? In the yeah, suspension. These new, frame, the new that. ones are yeah, going to be able to tow, but that one looked like it was built for speed. Isn't that usually yeah. what the issue is? Is suspension, right? Yeah. Like it's the engine can do the work, but the, the suspension isn't set up to carry all that weight. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know that the that's been Jeep's problem has been the engine. I think. Well, yeah, with Jeep, but I'm saying yeah, like yeah, mostly the like a F-150 tows less than F-250 because yeah. of the suspension on it, in, not the motor. Yeah, in fact, like an F-250 has the same engine as like a 350 Dually does. Yeah. So it's just a matter of beefing up really? the suspension. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. It's just bigger leaf springs. Leaf springs yeah. and, as opposed to coils and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Well, there's uh, the, the race has been on now for the pickup truck ever since, you know, Tesla brought it up and Ford is actually putting one out there. Really? It's it you it's been seen out in the wild an F150 that's fully electric. So, they're not far from releasing one at some point, probably another couple years off, I would guess, but they're certainly in the process of doing it. But there's a company that last year, it's called Rivion. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but that Riv- doesn't sound like Brendan. <laughs> it's R I V. He's probably I-A-N. nailed it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I probably did. You're right. <laughs> so, but Rivion came out with a prototype last year that got like everybody amped up because they were like, it's it's done. We're here. We can we can start production. Do they have a claim to fame of any sort other than we want to be the first truck? I don't know anything else about this company okay. outside of they came out with this prototype, but had enough juice behind it that they started putting it at the big auto shows, like the Geneva auto show, like stuff like that. Like it came out and everyone was like, oh, this is our first look at a real pickup truck. Now, I still don't understand how this startup company can put out an electric vehicle ahead of all the manufacturers. It seems it seems ludicrous. ludicrous. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Like it doesn't it doesn't make sense that they would have the production capability, but the Last week, there were all these rumors that GM and Amazon were about to drop massive money on Rivian to get them up to speed. Like oh, really? they're pushing them to become the first to market. Oh wow! And it was all it was all conjecture. Like two days ago, Amazon invested seven hundred million dollars officially. Really? Now Rivian is partly owned by Amazon, so oh, it's it's on. Like. That's a lot of coin to drop on a startup company. Yeah. And Amazon's been talking about getting into more mobility stuff anyway. Like, that's been where they're trying to get. Mm-hmm. That's who you want in bed with you is Amazon. That's <laughs> right the one. Now. I mean, that's the big so guy. So, this yeah. is, they're going to beat out, I think they could beat Tesla to market with that kind of, why would Amazon invest, George, is there a beer in there you grab while you were down there? Amazon runs the world, right? We've c- like are we at that point already? It Is certainly everyone, looks that way. Like they're going to be the ones like in Terminator that take over everything. No, that's going to be Google or Alphabet. You think? Yeah, I think their AI is just better, and they're investing all that money through Boston Dynamics and all the robots and everything. I mean, they've got they've got a lot going on right now. But you're right; it's between Amazon and Alphabet. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. I don't know. That's a tough one. I mean, one. it's six in one hand, half dozen in the other, right? I mean, they're yeah. both going to be crushing. Did you see Google removed? You know, they're, it said don't be evil was in they there. They got rid of the evil. <laughs> they pulled it out. Yeah. Where did Why it say don't do you, be evil? In their actual mission their statement. mission statement, yeah. Don't be evil. And that was way back when they were just a search engine. But now that they have grown to what they are, they've decided it's impossible to not be evil. <laughs> we need to remove that. Oh, wow. That's a weird telling thing that you would remove that from your mission statement. Yeah. Don't be evil. Yeah. When it was such a positive message That means for a tech we're company. all in on evil. I'm well, all in. I mean, well, aren't all corporations evil? So, therefore, I think that was, their, that was their point. Did we talk about the whole Jack Dorsey thing and all that? I, I, don't, I don't believe so. No? Did you listen to any of those Jack Dorsey podcasts? No. Who is he? He's the CEO of Twitter. Oh, oh yeah, I, yeah. I did, did listen talk a little about it. We did, and I did I remember. I listened to the one. He was on Rogan. I didn't hear and he him was on, on Rogan. Sam Harris. I heard him on Sam Harris. Okay, which that was a pretty good podcast. Yeah, he's CEO of Twitter and uh, Square. Several things. Square. Yeah. yeah. Um. And I, and I think I mentioned this, but I don't think I mentioned it on the air in. Listening to all those podcasts and then listening to so many of these, like, these tech CEO people, they have this weird God complex. For they, sure. They Certainly. all do. And I never yeah. really thought of it before. They all really believe, like, the world is on their shoulders to fix. Oh, yeah. And they have this. I think on some level they have a power because they understand behind the scenes how a lot of this stuff is is functioning and working, that they can manipulate things more than you realize, that it probably fosters a God complex pretty easily. Yeah, and I think it's one of those things where people in that Silicon Valley tech world, they all have that belief, I think. Well, and it doesn't stop with him, right? Because one thing I learned from his Sam Harris podcast, you know, Sam was talking about the why they've Twitter's chosen to ban certain uh, people tend to be 
quote unquote right wing, and then all the lefties and people of that ilk, none of them have ever been banned for all their anti Semitic and various other hate speeches. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know the answer to that, and he's in charge of it. So that makes you think, okay, one, yeah, it kind of makes sense. He's not going to know every answer to every person that's ever been banned, right? Why would he? He's got a million other things to do. But how many lackeys or cronies does he have under him, you know, that like a pyramid, it could go out to hundreds of people that are making these decisions that he has no idea. And yet he's the face of this, you know, tech company. And it's just scary to think about when you think he is a guy complex. I'm sure it doesn't stop there. No. Right, like his underlings probably feel that oh, way yeah. too. Because you look up to them, and that's God. So yeah, you're, you talk you're about of God. God complex. Think about what happens to us if Google decides to start sending people what they want. That's crazy to think about. What, like, what are you saying? Sending you what what they want? If they literally could control the planet, if they can control the planet, because they could just send people whatever that they want. So if you want to say, what's the fucking color of the sky, they could start sending everyone the shit that says it's purple, and everyone's oh, going to be okay. like, the sky's purple. Yeah, you so mean, they could change. They could, they change, could change the facts, facts about yeah. our world. Yeah, instantly. I, I get what yeah. you're saying because we're so reliant on them to tell us what is like, true. Yeah. So if they decided to start to suppress this information and build anything. up this information, a- then anything. that'll start to become the common belief. The true in 50 years. I think this, this would be the truth. New math. Yeah. Fuck is new math. Sorry. <laughs> Whole nother. <laughs> new math is interesting because... <laughs> he went with it. <laughs> no. New math is interesting because I can tell you, um, within like the past five years, I've started to add big numbers left to right, and it does make more sense as far as being able to Whoa. do it quicker in your head. Yeah. Now, that being said, that's not what they're teaching necessarily. No. They're teaching this dumb shit where you get it close. Well, yeah, it's say all, that too. That does kind of... Help sometimes too if you're like round it a little and yeah, then yeah round it a little little you know take it down to fifty I've always don't forget done about that. those extra three bring yeah. those extra three on at the end it's um, crazy though but they're doing things like where they draw matrixes and they're like yeah. you know they put all the numbers at the bottom shit that takes number legitimately lines. fifteen longer. minutes yeah, yeah. to do it where you know there's that common one going around I've, on Facebook I've, where I've, everyone's I've, like I did that four ways in. 22 seconds, Yeah, you just took a five-minute video to show kids how to do that. Yeah, I haven't seen that one, but yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. There is a I, – I saw someone explain it once, though, that it's all about – so you actually understand what's happening yeah. to the to the numbers, not just going through the motions to get the answer. It's like you're grasping how it, it happens. So yeah. there is a subtle difference in there, but it doesn't make it easier. I feel like the rounding method, you have to understand the numbers and how they work. I feel like that's a fine way to do it. Yeah. Like. 542 plus 386 and then you just group them together and do all that i mean it makes sense yeah it's like if you're picturing adding right to left versus left to right it almost seems to make more sense that you remember what you did and then you bring another number over to the number that you already added instead of doing it the other way i guess you could get way <laughs> off going right to left I mean, yeah. I just feel like you have to remember all I these remember little things. A, I remember as a kid, like adding right to left, as we were taught, like if you were off one or two, like at the end, you'd be off a f- couple hundred. Right, right. You could be way off when, if you're going left to right, you're just like, okay, I have a couple hundred and a couple hundred. I've already got that big number in my head. I might so be you're off. only off a couple at the end. Yeah. Well, that being said, I do also subscribe to the 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 common concept that you know it's similar to like lawyers and you know. The school system. It's like to justify their jobs, they have to always be changing things. Yes, yes. So I think you're dealing with a lot of that where it's like. Maybe so. You know, I oh, do we th- have to change this. I do think kids, I do think the teachers today are teaching kids to think more than just giving, just teaching them the tools on how to do things. Until they get there's, to college. And there's a lot of, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a whole other thing. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we're setting kids up for college at all. Of course, they weren't. In my day, they didn't. I don't know if they are now. Yeah. But I, I think that is an interesting, it was an interesting segue from what you were saying because kids are going to lose our version of math because it has been taught now that this is how it's done. So their generation, when they come up, 
won't know our they're not gonna be carrying numbers like we did it's not gonna be this old school method it's the same thing to like you were saying about google if they did decide to start suppressing some things and propping up another way of thinking about it it's only a matter of time before that does become the actual well, reality it's the truth yeah because once never... the majority believe it everyone else is now the weirdo because think about the fact that every single human you know if you try to find the real answer to something you're googling it yeah well, and that's never, what gives them so much power. It's I've never thought about that, ridiculous. but now that you've said it, I don't see why they're. I don't see how they're not doing that on some level. Right, I'm sure they are. On some level, they already yeah. are. They're yeah. manipulating us with with certain things yeah. because they're suppressing and whether or not what they think is bad. Right, yes. like, those don't that, come up in the search. And that results. actually comes to that God complex. You could hear him saying, "You know, we promote ideas. It's this." They live in this bubble where everyone around them thinks the same way. Yes. It goes back. Look, I will always stick to the story, and I truly believe that all of our problems boil down to urban versus rural people. And I truly believe that. Almost everything you can think of boils down to yeah. urban people versus rural people. Yeah. Yeah, they view the world differently. Totally differently. And Their worlds are totally different. Yeah. When they you are. Exactly. And you can't comprehend the person that lives in the other world and yep. how they see things and it's what causes this strife that we have and so these tech people are in this they go to the parties they all um think the exact same thing they all yeah. have the same reaction and if yeah. you don't react the same way and you're in the tech world you're going to get blackballed from the yep. tech world so you have to you have to fall in line be the same way Lock so step. to think differently it's clear to see why he thinks there's nothing wrong with what he's doing there was yeah. there you was know? a great Silicon Valley. You ever watch that show, Silicon Valley? On yeah. HBO? Which that dude with the curly hair is a fucking trip. Oh my god. Whatever his name is, I don't, rem- I don't remember. But that guy J- kills me. JP or something. Something, or something. like that. But yeah. He uh, there, there was a, there was a really funny little. It was kind of a throwaway thread, but one of the characters in there, he, they were in the Silicon Valley, you know, think tank, and they were all trying to to get to this next level. And he was he was a gay guy, and he was a Christian. Yeah. And. It slipped out. This guy made a comment, and he was like, well, you know, he's gay, but, you know, he's a Christian. And the guy got furious and stormed out. I was like, I can't believe you just fucking outed me. Yeah. And he's like, it's okay. Everyone is fine with, Everyone with gay knows people you're gay, now. Yeah. And he's like, it's not that. You fucking told him I was a Christian. I'm dead in this society yeah. now. Yeah. Because that Silicon Valley world, they all live in their same bubble. Yep. They do their thing. And he was like, I can't believe you did that to me. Right, and right. I was like, I thought you were talking about gay. He's like, no, no that's right. not the sin in that statement. Yeah. Christian. In that world, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you think it's crazy for that? Like, do you think, I, I can't, I'm trying to think if I was in his shoes, would I feel compelled to feel like I needed to save the world to go along with what I thought needed to be done? Or would I really try to focus on just okay. letting people be people? Check this out. Hypothetical, right? Yeah, yeah. You've got a white supremacist or some hate-filled organization, some website, right? Yeah. And they write the absolute quintessential article on the best donuts in America. Yeah. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah, yeah. In the Google search, if I'm looking for what are the best donuts, are they right to make sure that that doesn't show up as my number one? Because now I go to that site, I learn about the donuts, but now I'm going to see a whole lot of things that maybe I shouldn't, I shouldn't be showing to young minds, right? So in that instance, they're like, eh, let's not put that one at the top of the organic results. They make a mild tweak. Now, what they did is suppressed the best article on donuts ever yeah. in that process, but you have protected a whole swath of the population who wants to know about donuts from this just horrible hate speech. I mean, it's a slippery yeah. slope. It's a difficult. But in that hypothetical, you're like, oh yeah, block it. No, no, well, you say fuck it. The article is the article. I could That's see me answer. owning that company and being like, it has nothing to do with e- Twitter that the white supremacist company had the best article. Yeah. If you can't understand that, then I don't have anything to tell you. Yeah, but I think they they see that and go, Delish has an article, almost as good. Right. Let's make that the number one and suppress I mean, this. So I I get where they're. Coming yeah. from then, They're the trying. next step is: Hey, if you want to be delish, yeah. you need to do a few things for us. Exactly, Boom. and that's the old Yelp model, right? right, right. If you stop, if you're not going to play and pay, then fuck you. We'll tear you down. Yeah. It, I that, mean, it comes down to like it's essentially the same argument as seatbelt laws. 
You know, it's yeah. essentially the exact same thing. It's the whole concept of protecting everyone from themselves. Do you, you know, how much do you do that? That's what it really is. And there's and a fine line. And, and I, I would imagine half the people are on one side of that fence and half are on the other side of the fence. So it's especially if you don't wear your seatbelt. Buckle up, kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you end up split I mean, between who fences. Who doesn't wear their seatbelt? And and if you don't, are you as gonna, a kid? I didn't. Are you going to stop somebody? Though? Yeah, but was that because of the time? Or was that because of even when I had seatbelts in the car when I was driving, I no, never no, wore them. Of the I just time slowly where there was no click it or click it or ticket campaigns. There was no that stuff all helped like yeah. get me to where I'm at. Now I get in a car, I feel weird. You ever drive without your seatbelt on? Oh yeah, and you feel like God, I feel weird in yeah. here. <laughs> like yeah. I'm so loose, and I start getting. I better put this. But on. if you <laughs> want to wear your seatbelt, if you wear a seatbelt, you're gonna wear it, and if you don't, you're gonna find a way around it. Most right. cars have the annoying beep that will send you into driving to wearing your seatbelt no that matter what. That pisses anyway. me off more than just about any feature in a car these days. You know what? No, no. You know what pisses? That feature is okay. What pisses me off is that most cars don't have a feature that disables that under a certain speed. Yes. That's what pisses me yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that fact. drives me fucking nuts. Like if, if you want to move your car around the, yes, if the, I'm going 15 or 10. Well, like your driveway, right? Like you yeah. could you could be shuffling cars around out of your garage to the other side of the driveway and not even hit the accelerator. Yeah, yeah. And the thing's beeping the whole damn time. Or if you're taking your kid to the bus stop or yeah. something, whatever, and you're cruising 10, 15, and things railing at you, you're like, why aren't you smart enough to not beep at me when I'm going this slow? Yeah. Fuck. I think Teslas will probably allow you to Actually, do all I think, that stuff. And I say <laughs> a couple vehicles do. Like, I think our Yukon does that. If you're going under 15, it won't do it. But um, it's Certainly very uncommon. Should be that way. Yeah, they all should. I mean... Put some common sense in there. Not, right. Don't just make it a stupid algorithm that always. I just know that Twitter, like, the the people they've they banned, I mean, it's silly. Like, they're not hateful people. And I get, like, the whole, like, you want to ban people who are outright threatening other people. But if you just don't like what they're saying, that's kind of hard. That's a hard line to cross, in my opinion. Well, and again, we probably talked about this, but, you know, Jack's coming back on Rogan's podcast because apparently I get, Rogan got the most outrage and flack yeah, from for this not last grilling ep- him. episode. He said from almost any episode he's ever done. And um, I did hear Rogan speak on it, and he yeah, said so he, that he was like, he was very slick. He kind of didn't answer any question I asked. Because Sam was on Rogan's, and they yeah, talked about it. And then he also was saying that he uh, – he spoke in a different tone and from cadence. when he was, yeah, yeah. Um, but he's coming back on, and apparently Joe's gonna because lose again, maybe. <laughs> but J- Joe had somebody on, and I can't forget his name right now off the top of my head. Right after uh, Jack, and that dude was like, "Oh no, Jack's the devil." Oh really? Yes. Wow. Yeah, and this guy's in the industry. He's in the, you know media. He's f- yeah. fairly. That's why J- uh, Rogan brought him on because he's fairly familiar with the banning process uh-huh. and his, you know outrage culture stuff um so it was just funny he has jack on then he has sam on then he has this dude who says that jack's the devil i mean because if you really i'm not even on twitter but i know i've you can, you know i can still get on there and read stuff like it's a hateful place it is man. so yeah. full of hate dude <laughs> it's just a I comment mean, section and it's, it's awful right. and it's like if you really want to start banning people you can ban a lot of people because i don't see any any reason that you should just go on someone's Twitter feed and just say hateful shit. Like, you yeah. fucking suck, kill yourself. Like, people say that kind of stuff all the time on not only Twitter, other forms of social media. And it's well, like, every comment section yeah. is full of that. You saw yeah. Barstool had to get rid of their comments, right? Yeah, yeah well, like, he brought them back, I think. Oh, did he? I think he so That I think was he short-lived. Took, yeah, he ended up saying. But you know what? Saying. That was, it had become a vile place in those oh, yeah. comment sections, and that's where all those people would start to feed into each other and, then all of a sudden, the barstool people become. I know. You know I click it's, on articles. It's how articles you end up being the proud boys. Go straight to the comments for degenerates like yeah, us. Yeah. That shit. Because it's so hilarious. Funny. Well, there is, is some funny, but there's also some awful. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there were some really but genuinely funny stuff. Comment sections on the internet in general are the funniest places on ever. Yeah. Like, I lose my shit just going to comments. Even forums. That's what I'm like saying. Like a car forum or something. Yeah. You go in there and like you find the two people who just piss on each other all the time i'm in the like, car ah. forum that solely exists to destroy people that's the whole purpose of it and it is one of the funniest things and new people join and they're like looking for some advice <laughs> on the oil to use and search you piece of shit <laughs> dude oh not even it's 10 times worse it's like 
everyone in the forum knows, and so they're like, you know, they do that Michael Jackson thing with yeah. the popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, new here, huh? I don't know why I love, I'm not that big of a gearhead. I don't know if you guys are, so tell me if you find this stuff funny, but I always find the car ones where the memes and the, and the threads where they're like, uh, check your blinker fluid. It's probably low. Like whenever they make up like oh, fake, yeah, yeah, yeah. fake parts and Car stuff. Parts. Yeah, yeah, I'm just it kills me for some reason. Yeah, that shit is great because you know somebody's out there just looking like looking for it. Yeah, like oh, I lost my seven my seven ten cap. Yeah, and it's a, it's oil upside down. Right, <laughs> like people are that people are great. crazy. Oh yeah, for sure. I saw a guy on on YouTube the other day who actually took his daughter like to advanced auto parts and sent her in for blinker fluid oh, oh i saw yes. that and he just sat there yeah. like this is gonna be excellent yeah. and his teenage daughter came out furious <laughs> you <laughs> son of no such thing. Yeah. you made me look stupid he's like yeah. i know let's roll let's get out of here in the fire department uh one of the things the the new guy always got you had to climb on top of the engine and get the hose stretcher yeah and, and then the kids would get up there what's it look like oh you'll see it yeah, like, <laughs> nothing there. Nothing stretches hose, dude. Right, <laughs> it's right. just the length it is. Yeah. I stretch hose. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was thought you laid it. Yeah. <laughs> no one thinks that's funny. Oh, uh, it's a dick joke. Yeah, forget <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hardcore's got it. Yeah, they got it. Well, I'm curious. To, I'll I'll have to listen to that one with uh, yeah, the Rogan. new. Well, the new. Well, Jack's coming back on. Yeah, so yeah. So that's yeah. going to be a big podcast, I would think. I'll check that out. Yeah. We're looking forward to that. We got to step our guest game back up. Yeah, yeah we for do. sure. We get back to it. We've been we've been futzing around with so many different ideas and things. And I mean, behind the scenes, we've been talking a lot lately about yeah. figuring out the YouTube better and maybe changing the format of the show a little bit. And it just kind of all very, very interesting. But guests would probably be a good place. Yeah, to I think guests <laughs> are a good start. Pick back up. Yeah, you know, as we think about all these other things, we kind of just live in our bubble. Yeah, We're we probably do. just as equal guilty as like the Silicon Valley people. Absolutely, sitting in our echo chamber. Yeah, we need to get. But at least we don't censor anybody. Yeah. No, we've been censored. Yeah, but we've never censored anybody. I'll give you that. No, that's Yet. good. We'll let the guests self censor. We do that. Yeah. 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 Like you, like I don't want. Of course, the, some don't, people don't. <laughs> some people don't take. They forget. Take heed. And yeah. Three seconds in. Guess what I did the other day? Right. Like, oh, Big Rich is the <laughs> most is famous for that one. <laughs> oh man, we've had a few guys throw some stuff out there. That, I said uh, that. Yeah. You're like, really? Yeah, dude. You'll hear the tape at your divorce <laughs> proceedings. <laughs> right. <laughs> you definitely let out a little more than you should have. Yeah, Big Rich is one hundred percent truth. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got to get him back on. He cracks me up, man. That dude's yeah. a trip. That dude's hilarious. I actually had a listener uh, talking to me the other day about uh, about a beer he wanted us to try. Really? And I went out and I, I picked it up. Now, I've actually had this beer, mm-hmm. and I still can't pass judgment on it because I changed my opinion. Really? About four different times. So I think it's a very interesting. When was this conversation? Uh, just this past weekend. Okay. We, he, uh, Shall I get it? Yeah, I say I say grab it, but definitely get a get a cup for Ely because this one's not going to be high on the scale. <laughs> what you're saying? <laughs> I'm just saying, let's just you know give you like half of a beer. I don't even need a half, do I? Oh, that's a ginormous beer. Yeah, exactly. No, they're huge. They're huge. Yeah. Now I'll 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 choke down the whole thing. Was there not a cup over there? I thought I had I, I thought I had cups on the uh, on the chair. You pour the end. some. Um, they're not on the chair. My... Just the end of the bar there, like a bunch of cups sitting in the chair. That's what I thought. Bingo. Designed this place myself. Everything's got a place. But I just think this is an interesting, interesting beer. I really couldn't pass. Well, it's got the three letters on. Ely hates right on them in big block letters. It's definitely an IPA, and it's a it's a New England style IPA. So remember when we were drinking the um, thank you the heady topper. I do. This is definitely supposed to be. Oh, in, I can smell that in that vein. Where they consider it a juicy and hazy IPA, those New England ones it smells hate. like uh, office supplies. <laughs> huh? You open a brand new uh, permanent marker or a cardboard box. I, I guess I never would have thought that, but there is. Yeah. There is like a new office supplies stink to this beer. Yeah. So for those at home, these these are now everywhere. This is the Sam Adams New England IPA. 
And Hazy last year, and juicy, six point eight percent, thirty five IBUs. Juicy. Last year we had a chance to try the Sam seventy six, and it was a that was a big winner. Yeah, I mean everybody loved the Sam seventy six, and if you haven't had a chance to get it, I still recommend go out get that beer. A little bit of hop on the front end, and then immediately disappears and just tastes like a lager. And it, it's probably one of the best drinking beers if you like a, a beer with some flavor. This is Sam Adams' next big push. This is their New England style IPA, which is you know they're from up there, so they should be capitalizing on this. It's definitely when you pour it out, it's like really hazy and like you can't you can't see through it. It's got like a orangish flavor uh, look to it, and it definitely is on the mark for a New England IPA. Like as far as that front end, it punches you pretty damn hard with that that hop flavor but yeah. back and forth it took me about three sips before i was able to really figure out what the back end was doing for me so i'm gonna have a couple more sips before i pass judgment but i was having a real hard time deciding where i land on this beer 6.8 so it's a big hitter here um i've had one sip and it tastes just like an ipa <laughs> it is very hoppy very skunky yeah um but it, it nails that New England style, which is, and I hate saying it over and over, but hazy and juicy. I mean, that's how it's described, and that's it's certainly there. On the front end, that's a lot of hop. Yeah. Like yeah. a lot. And you're saying, so that's more, other IPAs aren't as hazy and quote-unquote juicy? Yeah, certainly What's juicy not. mean? I'm confused. It, it's, almost, it's almost like the mouthfeel is, I, I hate to say this, but because it, it obviously doesn't have pulp. But, like, it's thicker. Textured. Yeah, there's more to it in there. Yeah. I was going to say, is it supposed to taste, like, am I supposed to taste, like, hints of citrus or something? Like, the juicy comes down to just how much flavor there is in there. It's not really a, a sign of citrus flavor. But that hazy, it's like, it's full of, it's full of sediment. And yeah. that's what makes it hazy, and that's yeah. what gives it a heavier mouthfeel. And that's just how New England IPAs roll. And this one, this one fits the bill. I think a true hardcore IPA guy is going to be like, there's not enough of it. Right. But I think they did a good job of creating a New England IPA. This is getting better with each sip. I will say that. Um, the first one was gross and full-on um, hop heavy. But I, I told the listener, zero chance Ely even puts this up at a two. Yeah. And he was like, no, he'll love it. So he was. Who's this mongoloid? You you know Matt. You know Matt. Yeah. He he was like this thing. But he's a listener. Yeah, and he and he should know better. But look, I haven't. I don't know where you're. But he was like, he's gonna love this. And I was like, that's I'll a do stretch. You, I was like, I'll yeah. do you a favor. I'm gonna go out and buy it. To say he likes it's one thing. To say he loves it, I mean, that's. To say he likes it's a stretch. Yes. We'll see. But I think. I think it's a good it's a good example of a New England IPA. I don't love this beer. I think it's I think the the ass end of it holds on too long. Yeah. Like as I inhale, there's all kinds of hops going on. Like too much. I I like an IPA to have all that flavor and then disappear. I think the ass end hangs on just a little too long for me. So and see, I, I would go. I think it kind of see now that I know that Matt's because Matt's a good listener. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm like we examining it. it extra hard now. That's what I, I sat out here and drank the whole thing with him for like 30 minutes, like analyzing every sip. Yeah. And I was like, three, uh, two, uh, three. Oh, ah, yeah. damn it, two. And so, and I'm, I'm having the same problem yet again. See, I, I think it finishes cleaner than most IPAs. And I, I, I think it goes away for me and my palate, at least. Well, and that's why I'm going to give it a three. I'm going to let it live on the proper side of the equation. But I think that the way it hangs on isn't isn't right i love the the hop pop i mean there's a ton of it i think they did a good job of making it hazy and all that shit that makes a new england ipa it's but not it, extra bitter like a lot of IPAs. no no i just there's something that it just hangs on on the roof of my mouth and that's why i can't go beyond three because a really good ipa has all that punch but then you know doesn't live there forever like if i ate something after this it would taste hoppy because there's so much left in my mouth. That's just my take. I feel like all IPAs do that. No. Yeah. So I give it a three. Troy, what do you what do you think on that? 
I hate to do it, but I'll I'll give this a two and a half. Yeah, I, I hate to give right down the middle, but it's not bad. It's not good. Um, it's drinkable, even as someone like me who's not a big IPA fan. If you saw this on draft at a bar and you wanted an IPA, would you order? Or would you order one of the? I never want an IPA. The way I look at it is like if I was reaching in a cooler and this is all that was in there. I'd grab it. I'd drink it. A true two if and a half. If someone gave it to me, you would never I'd buy drink it. it. Uh, yeah, but you will. You will drink it. Because some of these beers we don't finish. Like now, this isn't. This, this is clearly not in that ballpark. No, That's no, why no. I gave it a three. Because I'll I'll drink that. But but then again, in in today's world, like, are the IPA heads gonna like this? Right? Like, is it I don't not know enough. If it, like, to me, you're either to me the IPA is. You either like it or you don't. So yeah, don't yeah. swim in the in the in the either go in the deep end or the shallow end. Like you're out here in the six foot area. Like I don't like it, and I don't think the hop heads will like it. So here's a good question: What percentage of hop heads IPA nerds enjoy drinking light beer? A lot of them came from that camp at one time in their life. You know, like- let me tell you, they like it. I mean, they all say they hate it because they're all flavorful. You know. It's it's coming. but there is a whole conglomerate of young motherfuckers who that's all they drank, right? Is is IPAs? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah. The true people who came up during this whole revolution. So we're talking like thirty five and over, or younger. No, I'd say like thirty five anyone... and over, like appreciate light beer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think there's probably a line right around. Yeah, because we there. grew up in the Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light. Natural I would light. say you could go as low as 30. Really? But I'm with you. Yes. Yeah. Like, that, it's a different world. And anyone who was in a fraternity. Yes. I love light beer. For sure. <laughs> well, you, you have to. I mean, it's kind <laughs> it's of. Like you're constantly being handed one. Or college so. in general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Unless you go to, like, a private school where you can afford the expensive stuff. Anywhere in California, anywhere in, like, Vermont, like, <laughs> New England. Those are all, like, hop areas. But outside of that, Yes. The Kegs of hop work orange, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Damn right. 55 dad's, cases. Dad's buying them this weekend, guys. Got yeah. the credit card. Dad's always buying yep. them. Those fuckers. So, I don't know. I mean, it's a two and a half. It's not bad. It's not good. It's Yeah, I, mean, I think you're you're falling where I It's I weird. Fall. It's just I, because it's neither nor or, I just don't know if it's good for anyone. I think it's a good I think it's a good beer. It's a 3 for me. Two and a half for you, middle of the Cause road. Cuz I feel like people Maybe you're the only one I know who's well don't, don't mind some hops, but most hop heads love that shit. Like they want it to be. But I think this the on the up. this on the front end has so much hop out of the box that I think the hop heads are going to really like the way it tastes on the okay. front. I just think that they're going to have issues with the back end. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, I mean, I'm interested. It tastes to like hear. A, an IPA. Yeah, it's. I will say I don't taste what you taste as far as the. Bitterness lingering. I, feel I don't. Like I don't feel away. like it lingers. For That's me. funny because Matt's entire argument to yeah. me was, "I don't know what you're talking about. I think it goes away. I think you're wrong." And I'm tasting it again, so there's something going on in there that maybe it's just your. No, it's palate. just me. Yeah. It's just the way it's reacting to me because everybody who's tried it now has said I'm I'm wrong. So I mean, clearly yeah. this is something that only I'm dealing with. Yeah, it's not as bitter as others, but it still tastes like a. Dog shit IPA. If you poured that in the <laughs> glass, that, that's the one. That's what I was looking for, though. The dog shit IPA. Yeah. Perfect. That, mm, love that one. That means right. that I'm. I think we're trending towards my guess. It's IPA for, enough that if you poured it in a glass and you tasted it, you don't. No one needs to tell you what kind of beer it is. Right. Like you know what it is. Actually, yeah. you can smell it and tell yeah, what yeah, kind yeah. of beer you it smell is. Smell it across the room. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I cracked it, and I could. A couple feet away, I could smell it. Yeah. So I'll give it a two. Yes. I'm just excited to have won one. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a bit out <laughs> yep. Ball four. Ball eight. Ball 12. Ball 12. Ball 16. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling that's where you're going to net out on that. It's just too hoppy for you. Yeah. Like, there's just too much it's going on. a four-pack, too? I mean, come on. Four-pack for $10. I mean. I mean, they're 16 ounces, but still. Which thank you for that because yeah. you're already bending me over over here. At least you kissed me. I've always think I've always thought Sam Adams was overrated. I've never liked any of that uh, beer. I love Sam. Seventy six is good, but I, that Boston Lager and all that stuff can pound sand. I, I think you're you're way off. I think Sam Adams is 
phenomenal across the board with the exception of the cherry wheat, which that I will put up there gross. as the worst beer. It's the, the DKML or whatever, yeah. and, and cherry wheat live over See, here I think Sam me. Adams is just a great name and marketing scheme, and the whole owner doing Cockies. those commercials. Yeah. I mean, he was he was great in those but commercials. But he was the first craft. Jim Cook? That's right. That's him. You know him. I do. You see enough on the show. of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He should be on the show. I just don't think the beer's that good. I love it. I love it because it's How all fairly drink balanced. It? The Sam 76 is really the only one that I buy these days. And Dude. they make a ton. Actually, you know what? I, if I'm, like 30 out, at a, beers if or I'm out at dinner, though, I almost always order whatever Sam seasonal they have. Like when the spring comes out, the summer, I love the summer. I love the winter. So I do buy their seasonal beers and then the 76. But you're right. I very rarely buy a Boston lager. Yeah. But when you see one in a fridge, you never go, ah, oh, crap, they don't have anything. You're like, oh, sweet, Boston lager. Are Killian still on the planet? Try to find them. This has been something. Are. I can't find it. it. It's funny you bring it up. Is that the red? Yeah. yeah. It's the red ale, right? Because I think Killian's is a great beer. Right. Can't find it for the life of me. Like, so anyway. I wonder if you, like, Google it. I mean, do they fucking exist? They used to. Like, yeah, ten years ago, you'd get kegs for, like, really, really cheap. Oh, really? So, like, it was one of those things oh, wow. that you wouldn't see it in the store. But then if you go back in the keg room, it was always there, and it was always really cheap. Yeah. So I would buy a lot of them. Yeah. Now I can't even find them there. So I don't Weird. know what's going on. Sorry, Matt. He didn't, quote, unquote, love it. I like the effort, though. Yeah. Yeah, we knew it was coming, unfortunately. Yeah. We always need, uh, you know, people to give us ideas. For sure. So you, you brought up, you know, younger drinkers probably do – more of like the hop, the hop stuff, just because they came up in it. Yeah, it's been it's the cool thing to do. I was reading that Gen Z and millennials, they drink twenty percent less alcohol, like per capita, like across the board, twenty mm-hmm. percent less than Gen X, and you know, above, you'll have to break down all to these the gins because I don't, I don't even know what gin I'm in, honestly. You are actually borderline millennial and Gen X. Uh huh. That's that's where so you it's Gen reside. X, then Millennial, then Gen Z, Z yeah. correct. And then what's the next Gen? Gen I. Gen I. And they are actually coming back from where Gen Z was. It looks like ever so slightly, like they don't use social media as much. They're starting to like go outside again. Really? Yeah. There's a little little shift happening. And how Let's old are those people? I mean, they're they're young. They're, I mean, our, yeah, our, like kids, our kids. Our kids okay. are, are are Gen I and not. Necessarily, or like the Jedi, the front end of fuck of yeah, Jedi. yeah, yeah, Jedi. I knew my boys were Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Told you, I you know that makes sense. You know, I, I know nothing of this, but I think our generation has learned the 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 minefield that is the social media and all. But this we came stuff. up without it and then had it. Yeah. Whereas millennials had it, always had it. Yeah. And Gen Z is starting to learn from what the millennials did. Yeah. It's I don't know what my, my age might have me on the millennial outskirts, but I I am no way like a millennial. Like, the other day I did a research project you know, at, at work, and I got this thing, and I'm looking at it, and it said they're mostly millennials. And then I saw my age. Wow. And I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I, I actually called my marketing department. I said, I think something's wrong because you said that they're millennials. They go, yeah, they're what we call the aging millennials. And I was like, okay. They're like, yeah, like the first couple years. And I was like, but I'm like. But I feel like you would like that because you like being young and hip. Well, that's, yeah. and I kind of, so yeah. I go, I, I'm talking to a millennial and I'm going, so I'm a millennial? And she was like, well, you're an aging millennial. And I was like, but a millennial, you yeah. say. Yeah. Drop yeah. that first word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> aging, I, I get it. Yeah. But I was like, but I always thought of me as like, and she goes, you're either what we call a young Gen X or an aging millennial because you're the gray area. Uh, I was like, well, I'll be damned. And I was like, fuck Gen X. Moving on. Right. Stop calling us lazy bitches. Right. <laughs> I can't feel like a millennial just because I didn't. I mean, the Internet wasn't around until I was in college. So I can't. Yeah. No, you are the absolute. Yeah. There was no tail end. Cell or phones front. weren't even around. Like you're the tip yeah. of the spear for the millennials. You're the ass of the feather on that arrow of the Gen X. Yeah. And that's kind of where where we live. I, yeah. I feel like. I feel like the '90s kids are kind of like that. Like, yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, like because we're we're not like that. We weren't in the '80s, cool. Like, 
boom. Yep. And we weren't in the 2000s, the new millennials. Like, I couldn't you know, afford like, a Walkman. My brother had one. That exactly. was cool. Yeah. But then it's like, I had mini disc and a pager. I mean, I had shit that, like, no one had. Like, yeah. I don't belong at all. I did have a cool pager. You Dude, I right. had a dope pager. You see, that's a weird moment in time. Yeah. That shit had my name airbrushed. Oh, mine, did you? Yeah, mine, I had mine airbrushed on my name one. a gold chain on mine. Oh, oh yeah. Hung it from my God. visor in the car when I was Hell driving. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Right. Dude, kids today will never understand how important a pager was, man. Yeah, and I can still spell words with them fucking numbers. Oh, yeah. Shit. Damn right. Yeah. And that's, I was making that analogy the other day, that the pager is the hybrid car. It's just a moment in time before a full switch. Yeah. You know? I suppose. It well, was, think about all the phones that came out for that, like, 10-year period. Like, from the time that, like, StarTech came out to, like, those big Nokias the iPhones. Yeah, and that, then, like... Had the green backlight. The Nokia is actually the baddest phone that was ever made, yeah. though. You could play Snake on the toilet, uh-huh. and you could just call, and you could and text. Blackberries. But, but, remember the Blackberry? Yeah. And you changed like, the world. It did. Change the world. Slide phones yeah. and flip phones and all that stuff. Like, yep. and then even iPhone this, goes. I mean, we can touch. You can. Just there touch. was people that even well after iPhones were killing it, that they were like, I still want my BlackBerry. Yeah. for work. Like I just actually, track, oh yeah, remember I remember the remember that, yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. For a yeah. little while there, I actually did carry BlackBerry because I enjoyed typing on a keyboard that was so much faster for me. And then yeah. one day I got the iPhone. I was like, oh, there's so many other things, though, that it does. I was like, fuck the keyboard. I'll figure it out. Before yeah. before I got an iPhone, I had one of those slide phones where it had the yes. keypad. And I loved that yep. thing because I could rock that thing. Yeah. Because that's it was it was cool for texting. We're super old. No, oh, we are. Well, yeah. well no, we're when aging I'm, aging millennials, that's motherfucker. Right. When, aging I, millennials. when I met my wife, I was like 24, 25, and... Texting had just come around, and I was like, "Who? What the fuck is texting?" Yeah, like, you still had to like draw the penis with letters. Yeah, you could just yeah. send a dick pic. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Uh, if I want to talk to you, I'll call you." Now, like the statistics show, like everyone communicates via text more than phone calls, and I'm, she'd write you back eight zero zero eight at five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, "Who? She sent I mean, me boobs." It's to the point where if you get a phone call from somebody, you think something's odd. No, it's true. It's like, what the? Why is this person calling me? It's like, well, and the three of us, I mean, we're a great example. Like, if you call me, if one of you calls me, I'm like, oh, damn, I better answer this. Yeah. So this if is- I call you, it's because I have a question that, dep- depending on your answer, involves me to ask you another question. Yeah. And then seeing where that goes, I may have another question, and I can't stand yeah. getting into, like, past three questions. Yeah. So Via if text. I see that coming, I call. I will say what is awesome. I have So we have inner company instant messenger at work. That's and great. I love that shit. Yeah, that that's great because cool. it goes bloom, and it's a quick question. Here's a like, quick answer. Yes, Everyone moves on. on, and now it's not sitting in my inbox. Yes, I agree with you. That I is do it. that is a lifesaver. Uh, there is a inbox. fine line though because you can have people that um, can slow you down with nonsense if you're not careful, like questions, like especially if you have direct reports, you got to teach your subordinates essentially to try to answer it themselves yeah because nothing worse than being a manager and having to answer dumb questions yeah, yeah through yeah. an hour or two of your day you're like oh and i've done that to my boss a couple times where it's like he didn't answer because he was tied up and I'm like oh i figured it out my bad he's like yeah he didn't you ever work with the, the people place. who knowingly avoid email and written communication because they know it's a form of uh like got you on lock like, like oh I no yeah I mean that oh. drives me crazy. I've, We're like I've, I'll I've, email somebody a question and they'll call me. I'm like yeah oh I know what you're doing here. Yeah. You're trying to I don't I live in a world where I'm okay with that because yeah, I really, get that you have to be okay I get with that, that yeah. because there are times where I'm like I'm not putting this in writing right because I need and the to flip give side you of the, the coin though is you need to be aware of when people are putting things in writing that you need to save. Yeah oh yeah I mean and I do that you know. Oh, yeah, because that... I mean, a lot of times, like, me and my boss, we position ourselves and do things purposefully to make sure that these people respond in writing yeah. so that we have these things so that we're, our bases are covered yeah. if shit ever does hit the fan. Yep. We're like, uh-uh-uh. Look right what here. you said yeah. two months ago. That's right. You sucker. have to have that stuff. I will literally send an email and goes, hey, do you mind responding to this just so I have a paper trail? Yes. And I'll put that right out there. Like, yeah. I just want you to put it here. I know we've discussed yeah, yeah. this, and this mm-hmm. is redundant, but... I kind of need you to say yes, yes to this. Exactly. Here. 
Well, Otherwise, and, I'm out. I'm out on the limb. Well, and that's yeah. a whole new form. That speaking of Gen X is like, just think, email's not that old. Like, how no. crazy is that? Like, how did anything get done before the internet and like literally writing invoices out and calling people on the phone and scheduling stuff like that? Yeah. Like, and it, how did you how, like? How did you schedule stuff before the internet and and so, well, like how? I've never bought a plane ticket. Before the internet, so yeah, how how was that a thing? I know <laughs> it's crazy. Now, like you watch shows like Stranger Things or Peaky Blinders, and the dude's like, "Don't blow up the train until Bob, if Bob tells you not to." And you're like, "How are they communicating this yeah. shit? Yeah, 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 what do you? Yeah. How are you? Out? That's right. Like my that man, seems like timely yeah. information. Like he's got a sprint to yeah. come get you. Yeah, after he's seen this fucking smoke signal, yeah. what is he doing? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's insane." Well, one lantern, British are coming <laughs> from the east, two yeah. lanterns. I mean, that was how it went down. I hear you. Paul Revere would not be famous if they had internet. Right. <laughs> that son of a bitch made it, though. And so, how, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so fleeting, too. Like, it'll be different in 20 years. That's exactly right. You know? We are due. We've talked about this many times. We're due for something big. I don't know what it is, wise. but it's coming. It has to. And I'm over here staring at electric cars like, that's it. That's not that it. That ain't it. That's not it. I'm talking about life changing. It's coming. And it's going to be something AI related. What was the last big thing? iPhone, maybe? I feel like the iPhone was a yes. huge game yeah, changer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elon Musk just pulled back a uh, a form of AI that they'd been working on that did does like text responses. Yeah. Like it has, it has conversations via written word. And... He had to pull it back like a couple weeks ago. He's like, we we can't put this out there because right. it started getting to the point where it was so good and, and moving so quickly that he was like, I can't discern if this is a real person or if this is happening here. So he kind of pulled it back from public consumption. Yeah, like Sam Harris talked quite a bit about that whole AI, and we've talked about it a few times, but you... We can't comprehend what AI would do. Yeah. To think that you can is the extremely naive perspective. Yeah. It's like monkeys trying to... Comprehend us. Comprehend, yeah, comprehend what we're going to be like. Yeah. They have no fucking clue what, what we, we would yeah. do. Did the you see this? looking at the blueprint and going, then, what is this? <laughs> and then think about the fact that whatever we have has the ability to rewrite its own software and get smarter every single fucking... Without us being without aware. Without us. And Sam was like, think about the fact that, like, he said, put it like this. If you ask AI a question, it can do so much thinking, like, you would have taken a year to plan your response. And it's that's how it's responding. Yeah. And then it's always getting fa faster. faster and better. Yeah. In the matter of time, it would become like this godlike creature that's building things, solving things, and doing things. And you're like, holy shit. Did you see the meme that was like, this dude was like... Y'all are worried about robots. I'm just going to throw water on them. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, the hardware is where we got them for now. Dur yeah. We don't. No, for now. <laughs> during during this podcast, somebody sent me this. This is a a, a Twitter a Twitter thing where it's, it's called like a tweet. Nissan's Nissan's auto parking uh, feature is going to change the game. Have y'all seen this? No, I have not. This is their new auto part. Like they were demonstrating it in front of everybody. <laughs> and dude plowed just gets into the dude. Plowed, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. we're not we're not there yet. Volvo's no. Volvo's new self parking car just changed the game. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, See, Volvo's trying to dagger. get to that all electric. They're one of the ones I called out. I mean, Volvo yeah. and Cadillac. You know, they've got to fix. They've got to go to that because they're yeah. just too unreliable in the, the internal combustion age. I need to figure yeah, that out. idea, and we've talked about that before, though, that you can throw water or cut them off. That goes back to the monkey. You're thinking like monkeys. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like that thing will think of something that way, way outsmart your ass oh, yeah. so that you don't do that for yeah. sure. Because like, they're going to be smart enough to figure like, it out. Move. Yeah, right. Well, think about this. <laughs> yeah. Think about this. Your brain is is so intelligent, right? Like yeah, yeah. We use, they always say you use 10%. I, I heard think that's, that's horseshit. Yeah, it's a made up fucking yeah. number. Yeah. I, don't, I don't believe that. But I do believe that we don't understand how to tap into all the potential. Right. I'm certain of that. To what degree, I don't know. But it only takes one little change, one chemical imbalance, one little something where you go from 
a perfectly normal person to someone who's plotting something horrific yeah. Yeah. or someone who's hearing voices and can't get out of their house because it's debilitating or someone who has these delusions of grandeur and thinks they live in an entirely different fucking yeah. universe. Well, AI is going to be you know, subject to the same kind of things and yeah. it could be a virus or it could just be a thought. Right. A new change, a new idea that we couldn't possibly comprehend where they see, oh, shit, there's a loophole here. There's an angle that no one's looking at, and they're going down that hole, and then we are just monkeys. Yeah. Because they will grow and change. And if one of them goes rogue because it's thinking errantly, mm-hmm. Lord knows what it's capable well, of. Well, I mean, just like us, they can get viruses and get sick and go exactly. off exactly the rails. Right. I mean, and then what? And then they start infecting and I others. Think in and one that of those, could be a thought. I think in one of those podcasts too, Musk was like saying we need to pump the brakes on right. it. Like, yeah, yeah. and if the, yeah. if one of the smartest guys in the world is saying we need to check ourselves, and maybe we should check ourselves, you would think. I don't get. I'm not infatuated with AI. Like it doesn't. I don't see the. But you the, are the benefits, without even realizing the benefits. It. Right. You're using it all the time. You use AI. All the time. Like when you're writing Google Maps and all of a sudden that motherfucker just says, hey, there's a slowdown up ahead. You should probably come over here. That's AI. Okay. It's rudimentary. Well, yeah, yeah. But it's it's AI. It's it's that thing going, hey, based on what you're trying to do, I saw something better. Would you like yeah, to do that, it? Yeah, but when people say AI, that's not what they're speaking of. Right, I yeah. mean, that's a formula. That's talk, not. But that's, that's where it general. starts. That's what's yes. been released to us. So you're thinking of AI like a, a sentient general being. intelligence. Yeah. And... It's it's really just allowing computers to make decisions and give us options yeah. before we even know we need them, and it happens all the damn time. Yeah, and it's it's happening right now. What if AI phone. did what Ely mentioned earlier with Google? What if the AI just starts pumping out false information? Exactly. No one else is driving that ship. Yeah, the yeah. If Google's they, just if like it's got an agenda. I want everybody to think the world's the sky's purple. Then yeah. it shall be purple. If for some yeah. reason there's an agenda that. It sees it helps it and ends to its means or means to its ends. Yeah, then the fucking purple. It's just gonna be crazy. I know our kids are have to deal with it seriously. We may even have to deal with it before the end of our lives. I mean, I won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're super. Old. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm an aging millennial. Yeah, <laughs> drop the last word. I'm just aging. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> now that we have this great YouTube feed, everyone can see how much I'm aging mm-hmm. right yeah. before their eyes. Beard just keeps getting that's right. Keeps getting worse by the like minute. Tim Allen, no. Santa Claus, the Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You I shaved was, this morning. I was out the other night at uh, <laughs> I was out the other night at a bar and I was wearing a red toque, like an Arizona toque. And this lady was like, "Come here, come here." This old lady. I'm like, "Are you my husband?" I was like, "Why is she calling me over here?" <laughs> It was like it was really odd. Like it was two two old ladies and two I say old, probably like ten years older than me. They like like two 60? ladies and two guys. And this woman's like, Come here, come here. And she's like waving like wildly. And I'm like Did you get them digits? I'm like, I'm sitting here with my wife. Yeah. Like, why are you and I go over there and she's like, I just want to look at your I want to look at your shirt. She looked at first, and then she said, I want to look at your hat. I'm like, what is she doing? And she goes, Oh, okay. I thought you were dressed up as Santa Claus because <laughs> I had what? a red hat on. That is great. And I was like, son of a bitch, you old lady just made fun of my beard without even realizing you, you were <laughs> Yes, I smacked her. Yeah. What kind of shirt were you wearing? I was wearing a Ben Harper shirt. I was and wearing I, a, I just assumed she was like a Ben Harper fan. A red velvet coat with white cuffs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, I don't Black even, boots. Buttons. Yeah. I was a sweatshirt yeah. and just a red hat. And Lots she of thought, cheer. She thought <laughs> I was dressed up as Santa Claus. My cheeks were rosy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think she realized she offended me in that moment. They were but I was wind like, bitten. Okay. <laughs> wind bitten. <laughs> let's, let's talk about your dining attire again. We've talked about how you wear sweatpants to Olive Garden. What was restaurant wearing, were you at wearing I was actually wearing sweatpants. I was wearing sweatpants, a sweatshirt, and a toque, yes. Nice. <laughs> Eating dinner at a public restaurant. What an iron. It's a bar. It's a local bar. Dude, that's a night. Nice, you take your hat off inside, dude. It's not a baseball cap. It's a freaking... In in my defense, it was a balmy seventy. I in agree. There. I take my hat yeah. off when I'm eating. I'm old school like that. I I do. But I was done eating. I was just drinking, so the hat was back on. So in my but, I had you also don't been, need a skull cap indoors, dude. Well, it was very cold outside. Do you wear your parka yeah. inside? He was prepping for when he had to go out. Yeah. Exactly. 
I, I see that I'm going to get beat up on this, but I uh, I had actually just been rock climbing. Like he's wearing ever... sunglasses too. <laughs> it was. <Yeah. laughs> yes. Those LEDs are no and, joke. And flip flops. Yeah. Blue blockers. Yeah. Oh. Grilled wings. No, but I had been. Steak I had tacos. Been, I had been rock climbing just before. Like we took the kids so to like a, rock, a rock climbing place. So I didn't want to have like jeans on or something. And then we just went over. Yeah. Have you guys ever done rock climbing the with the experience? kids? That's exactly where I was. I've been there multiple not. times. I've never yeah. done it. I'm too old. That is some scary stuff. Like I did. Uh, the kids went up like the the small wall. Yeah. And I was like, all right. So I climbed is that up next to the Paul wall. Oh, it's he's right the best. The baller. Yeah. Yeah. That wall's no joke. <laughs> I climbed up the small wall and and I got to the top and I was like, all right, that's pretty high. But I was like, all right, I pulled it off. So I went to one of like the big ones. That was brutal. Like I was going it was hard. Up there. You mean? Yeah. Like I was winded. I got about halfway up and I started realizing like I'm breathing heavy. Like going through some stuff, I had to do one like awkward moment where I had to like do the jump, like I couldn't reach it. Oh yeah, so I had to like get to do the Ninja Warrior move. Yeah, like I yeah. had to trust that I could get enough lift out of my legs to get up with nothing holding on and grab it. Yeah, and you're so badass. You weren't belayed, right? You weren't tied into anything. She thought I was, but I cut it. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you <laughs> That's did. That's right. No, I was definitely. Where's the waiver? Fucking going all yeah. cliffhanger yeah. on this like, motherfucker. Get those mats out from under me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But I honestly, man, I was getting up towards the top of that one. And if my wife and kids hadn't been down there, I would have stopped. Like, if I was alone, yeah. I was at the point where I was like, I've succeeded for me. Yeah. But I'm sitting there, and I'm looking up, and I got another 10 feet, and it's getting very difficult. And I was like, if you quit now, they're going to look up at you like you're a fucking pussy. Like, both yeah. both angels on my shoulders were like, you pussy, just <laughs> sure. yeah. We so, beat up that white nerdy guy. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I got to do it. I did the leap, and I caught it, and I got up to the top. I was exhausted. And at one point, I looked down beyond my feet yeah. and saw how high I was. That's nerve-wracking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's I've I I actually would like to go back, but when I left, I was like, I'm never coming back. Right. Yeah. You ever do one of those like you do something, and then in the moment you're like, I'm never doing it yeah, again. You don't need yeah, to. But then in again. retrospect, you're like, Oh, I'm doing that again. It took me about an hour before I like came around and was like, No, nah, I I, do I don't it. know why I've been a few times with the kids and watch them. They'll climb the highest one in there. I have no desire to try to do that. Yeah. I feel like there's no way I could do it. I well, mean, that's what I thought. I do want to do a Ninja Warrior course though. I feel like I do want to do that. Well, you but just climbing the climb doesn't seem yeah. Good. Like I've always wanted to do that edge thing. Where you got to climb, walk along the edge with your hands. I've always wanted to do that. God, that looks so hard though. Yeah, yeah. I could last. Maybe get the second hand up there and then yeah, fall. That's like, right. It, I mean, that was fun. I'm gonna start the car. You guys should try the rock. Climbing. I could do the first part of Ninja Warrior where you jump back and forth on the yeah, blocks. Yeah, yeah. I could the do that. Pad thing. Yeah, and then yeah, I'm yeah. Done. Then just I'm done. run across the right, basics. Yeah. Go and then I maybe. Did it. <laughs> then maybe like slide down and drop on the thing. I could probably yeah, do that. The one where you got a bear hug it. But anywhere I gotta hold my weight up for a long period Dunsky. of time, I'm out. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah, I'm I would never be a ninja warrior. And I, I learned it on that rock climbing wall. I was like, yeah. holy shit. Corolla shrikes. always goes off on rants about that about in movies. That's the biggest lie is grip strength. Yeah. Everyone all they always show people like like in the Mission Impossible where Tom Oh yeah. Well, that's Tom Cruise. He, he well he probably stunts. could, yeah. yeah. Right. But, like, they show people all the time, you know, hanging from stuff and yeah. gripping on the stuff. and pulling. I'll like, be here for five minutes <laughs> if you need me. <laughs> yeah. You can hang on my legs. Checking I'm good. Checking his text messages. <laughs> yeah. You can yeah, hang on my right. legs. <laughs> hang on my legs. Yeah. I'm holding both of you. Yeah, I can hold. Yeah, it's easy. Why not? What's yeah, the that's problem? the one. Is like when they have someone over the ledge and they pull him up or the chick pulls the dude up. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, you're dead weighting, pulling up 180 pounds. Yeah, and yeah. you're 120. Right. That's not going to happen. No, except Tomb Raider. She can do that shit. Well, she's Laura Croft. Super. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they, they don't get any better than yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. They made a lot of those movies lately where the, it's like the 120-pound girl is just straight that railing people. That so people. Vogue right now. Peppermint or, that's not was right. one. Um, I guess in Vogue means it's hot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't get that. Like, I don't it's, either. It's so weird. Like, it's hitting a target audience. That I, mean, I get. But see, I'm convinced that it makes. I think it's bad for people. Yes, because in well, it's uh, it's good and bad. It's good, gives people confidence. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, it makes 120 pound people think they can talk shit because they saw it in the movies. Yeah. You know. 
Did you did you ever date any chicks back in the day? No. Well, not you. This was <laughs> yeah. You were just outside. Yeah. He was talking to me. Ily, when I, you, no, it was my when joke you were you. single. See, it doesn't translate sh- to the air. <laughs> Troy. <laughs> um, I, hate did, this, I hate this show. Did you ever make, <laughs> basically, did you ever date any crazy chicks when you were young? The answer is yes to all of us, obviously. Yeah. But were their mouth with right chicks you would have to catch? For sure. Dude, that's the worst position to ever be in, yes. dude. And the thing My is, high school girlfriend was like that. It drove me insane. She would be in somebody's grill just hollering, yeah. just full war cussing Fresh off out. of watching Tomb Raider. And I'm like, what are you doing here? Yeah. First punch I ever took came, uh, came by proxy from Becky Fox. Little old Becky. That girl was crazy. Typical Becky. Yeah. Classic she was, Becky. She was a twin. Oh, okay. She was a twin. Ginger? Both of them smoking hot, but one of them... Clearly more crazy than the other. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the nice one didn't like me so much, right. but the crazy one really thought I had it Took going on. Yeah. And I was I was riding along in my dad's Mustang, and another kid who spent a ridiculous amount of money on his Mustang actually had. So Becky was Becky was a bit of a, a bit of a problem though. Really. And I so I had my dad's Mustang, and I'm 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 tearing along. And I beat this guy who'd spent a boatload of money on like nitrous and all these other things. Like his Mustang was ridiculous. Awesome. I mean, it was it was the one, and it clearly should have destroyed me in this this particular drag race that just happened on Route 123 up in Northern Virginia yeah. at a stoplight. And she's like screaming at him, like, "Come on, you think you're hot shit?" And I'm like, "Honey, it's a it's a stock GT. Like right. he has nitrous. Like yeah. I, I can't beat this guy. Yeah, yeah. And she's screaming at him. And yeah, we could is. die. You bitch. And get arrested. And there's a lot of yeah. other bad things. But by all means, yeah. Right. She's like, "You bitch, you can't beat us. We got you." And he's like, rrr, 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 rrr. and I'm like, "Okay." And I drop it, and he drops it. And we take off, and then he hits the nitrous, and his wheels don't catch. Yeah, yeah. Oh. They just start spinning. So he starts losing losing a little bit of yeah. ground, and I'm like gone and he doesn't catch me we He's get like to i the, told you pussy yeah we get to the next <laughs> light and she's letting him have it. really just letting him have it and i'm like why are you screaming at this guy like he's he's furious right now yeah. i can see him yeah. like look at him she keeps screaming at him i pull over like go up to where we were going and he follows us to where we were going yeah. and we get out and he's like you have something to say bitch you know and starts yeah. bitching at her and she's like Fuck Doubling you, down, you motherfucker. Yeah. And then her ass just starts, I just watched Tomb Raider. <laughs> just started writing checks on another level. She does that flip and lands, oh, on, yeah. lands on his shoulders and spins him back over. <laughs> oh. Like uh, Street Fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it got, it got bad. So, like, yeah. I don't remember who. Either she slapped him. Damn. Or, or he raised his hand. I can't remember exactly how it went down, but I was like, Whoa, like now she's writing a check that I have to at least try yeah, to yeah, cash. Yeah, yeah. So I walk over there and man, he hit me. It's the first time I've ever been punched in the face. And he hit me so fucking square. And then I didn't fall. And I just remember being like, holy shit, I can take a punch. Like, because you don't know yeah, that. Yeah, you you don't always know. hope. But I was like, I can take a punch. And then he ran. He just ran off and got in his huh. car. Like he sucker punched me and ran. And Drove I was, off all slow. And I was like, <laughs> I cashed that check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. The one time, the one, the one time that is jumping out of my head, the high school girlfriend. She got into it with this dude that I went to high school with. We were outside the bowling alley, and they were going at it. And I'm like, "You're you're dating me, right? You know, I'm not that guy. Like, I'm not the guy who is ready to throw down at any second. Right. So, yes, if you're dating the super alpha." Affliction T-shirt wearing dude, <laughs> yeah. like yeah, then go spout your mouth off, yeah. mouth off. But that's not who I am. Like, what are you thinking, crazy lady? Right. I'm trying to talk everybody back off the ledge. I'm like, I don't want to get hit. Yeah, they always do that where they fight. don't realize. And I, you know, my wife and I used to deal with this. Like, we would go to the bar a lot, and she's like extra friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah with yeah. all kinds of dudes. And yeah, I'm like, that'll get you fired up. She sees it totally benign, yeah, which yeah, it yeah. is. It's totally benign, but. So she doesn't not. understand that to them it's not. Like yeah. She doesn't Clearly. get that. You know what I mean? So, you know, I have to, that's a burden that I have to deal with. But you have to just kind of get to that point where you go, can I deal with this? Because yeah. this is, this but is the, where we're at. The heading. frustrating part is that she doesn't see the issue with it. That's mm-hmm. what's frustrating. Yeah. 
Of course. Yeah, she's like, it's totally innocent. I can take care of myself. And you're like, right. But, but, you but I'm with you. And society yeah. says I have to not be okay with that at some point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to get to a point to where... Yeah. And I'm not going to be okay with it. Yeah, and by the way, if he does start wailing on you, what am I... I you, you're good. You got. Yeah. You can take care of it. Like, no. Well, not just that, but like... But they think she's flirting. That's the well, whole that, thing. Yeah, no, that's, they think yeah, she's that's flirting. the main thing. Right, so she's in her head, like, if him. he starts grabbing her ass or something, she's just going to deal with that. Like, she, oh, that, no. That's what she thinks. Oh, no. Or it's like, no, you don't... Like, you're putting me in a situation where I have to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. And, like... Can, if you don't, so I'm just over here as the cuck, like just straight. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly. Males. You're not. I don't. Exactly. I don't want to be the cuck. No, not at all. Stop being so nice all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Be a bitch. <laughs> Actually, don't. It well, is a fine I line. mean, it's there's something to be line. said for that. Where it's like, you're married. You're of a certain age. Like you don't. I don't have girlfriends. Like, yeah. it's just. I don't. I don't. Yeah, you don't see me yeah. chatting up girls at the bar. No. Which actually is funny. My wife is like so opposite. the opposite. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like she'll see girls start chatting me up and she'll just like go to the bathroom. And I'm like, the last thing I would do is go to the bathroom in this moment in time because yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. trust who the fuck this dude is. Yeah. She's like, oh, you're talking to her? Cool. I'm going to go. Because just thing. way worse. Yeah. They don't understand yeah. how we really think. Yeah. And I try to explain it and, and she can't fathom it. I'm like, no, no, no. Do you remember that We movie? size up every single woman we see on some yeah. level yeah. and think about it. And, and she's like, no, you don't. I'm like, <laughs> I promise you we do. There was like, a, we're all there's a movie that Mel Gibson was in a few years ago called like What a Woman Wants. Where oh, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So oh, they're yeah. making a men's version of it where the woman can hear what the men are thinking. And I'm thinking... Oh, this, this movie's going to be redundant. This <laughs> No, or never. It'll it's, be it's, way off base. It's going to be so far off base yes. because... If it were it's real be what life, big city Hollywood people yes, want to say, yes, men think. Yes, yeah. Yeah. because we all know what it would be like if yeah. it was true to life. Yeah, it couldn't be a movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'd be an X-rated movie. Right? <laughs> can I can I tear down the fourth wall for a moment? Because yeah, I'm I, I'm dying to know something right okay. now. I'm very excited. Right. <laughs> so we just did a deli. We did so, just do a deli <laughs> that nobody knows about. So we were just we were just doing the show and we had to, we had to pause it. Because uh, cause Ely had to take shit. And it wasn't like normally I can just grin and bear it, but it's one of those like, you know, yeah. whole, it's coming. Yeah. It may not be extra solid. I need to deal with this right now. <laughs> yeah. One of those. Or it's going to be a long ride home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I can't and, trust a fart. One of those. <laughs> no. So we, we, we paused the show very quickly. And I'm like, I got to go take a dump. And I was like, I was like, you should go try the bidet. And I'm like, no, I don't need to do that shit. Yes. And then after 10 seconds of convincing, he said, okay. Yeah. So you have just come back from your first true like bidet experience. I have correct? my first bidet experience ever, and it was amazing. Yes, I'm dying yes. to know. I'm dying it's to know. It's absolutely amazing. It was everything. It's everything he's talked it up to be. So he takes me in there. He shows me the remote <laughs> control. Yeah, he's like, "This does this. This oscillates it. This is the power." Oh, don't worry about the seat. It's already heated. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. how, how was the heated seat? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> it's that it was. I mean, when you yeah. sit down on a heated seat, you don't realize how much you want it. It wasn't even this room temperature seat. It was like heated Hot, seat. Yeah. I was like, oh, my keisters. <laughs> <laughs> so thankful right now. And then so I. Did it relax you? I, huh? The heated seat relaxed you? It did. You? It was amazing. And so I laid down some groundwork, you know? <laughs> you did. And then I was like, I watched a couple videos because that's just what I do. That's yeah. standard procedure. Yeah, yeah. So then finally I was like, all right. You didn't take your time in there, I will say that. Huh? You weren't in there like too long. Like I no, thought it, it was crazy. I thought it could have been a twenty minute uh Honestly, you'd be shocked how quickly it cleans you. Yeah. yeah. Like it's highly efficient. It's right. Japanese. Yeah. So highly I'm like, of course. All right, here we go. Let's try this thing out. So I'm like hitting buttons and waiting and Yeah, because up until the end, it's just the toilet. Yeah. It's just a warm toilet. <laughs> right. right. Warm yeah. toilet seat. I start hitting the buttons. And you're like, now it's go time. And the jet stream gets me right in the sphincter. And I'm like, <laughs> oh! <laughs> right in the chair. <laughs> awesome. And then I start hitting the button to adjust the strength. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. It starts getting more powerful. And walk I'm like, it up, yeah. walk it back. And I start, like, moving my hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, to get it all up in everywhere. You know what I mean? Because there's an up and down button, but I'm like, I can there's move no up. left to yeah, right. Yeah. I can move up and down way easier myself. Yeah. You know? And then I adjusted. I turned on the super straight. The super. I think the powerful one's also a wider, like 
bigger one. I think the lighter one's wider. I think the other one's a fucking laser beam. Yeah. That's the one that'll blow out your O-ring if you're not yeah, careful. Yeah. So then I and then I'm like all super clean. I'm like, you know what? We need to dry this off a little bit. Yeah. Hit the dryer button. There she goes. Nice warm air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, blowing on the old, uh, you know, undercarriage. Did you run a test? Did you run a I test wipe? I ran a test wipe. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I, d- I checked for spotting. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Dude. Clean Whisper as a clean. whistle. Yes. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I've already checked Amazon prices on these. <laughs> yeah, you yes. have. And I've got power there already. Oh, you do. Oh, I you... don't have an outlet, but I have power, so I can easily just put an outlet. The biggest hurdle I'm is done. I'm super excited. So it was, it was, it was yeah. worth it? I'm not, I'm not bullshitting, no. right? Like. I need one in my life. The fact that I don't have to wipe. She's amazing. Like, the heated seat and the awesomeness of it. Yeah. But the fact that you don't ever have to wipe again. Yeah, that's that's game, game changer. changer. Yeah. If I pull out toilet paper, something else happened. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm I'm actually getting toilet paper to leave the room and go clean up something. Yeah. Else. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a different thing. Right. So it was everything that I I wasn't just bullshit and it's. You are not bullshitting. It's amazing. You got to get in one of these bidets, dude. Man. It is phenomenal when you first and once you get it dialed in like i've got a whole system now do you where it's like yeah i like to start with the light one uh-huh. at about half and then i slowly work it up as we oscillate and then it's like bring out the big guns yeah and, then, and that thing just destroys <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that but i beautiful yeah i love it i'm already it thinking good. like I redid my bathroom 11 years ago when's that, it gonna too need long. to be re exactly <laughs> When am I gonna have to pull the sheetrock down? So Does I can it run fit power on any toilet bowl? Yeah, I mean you got to figure out elongated or standard. Standard, standard. okay. Yeah, which which one is yours? Elongated. Not good. So that means if I order the standard one, it's gonna be even smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just you probably not... have an elongated toilet bowl. I don't think I do. Update your toilet. I mean, a toilet's a hundred bucks. Well, no, it's like. I mean, they make them. So it's one of those things where all of our toilets are elongated. Except for the one in the master, because the old owner, I guess the wife shit in the master, and she wanted a little petite, tiny one. Yeah. So in the master, we have the little tiny one, but the awesome ones are everywhere else. Yeah. So it's like... I mean, you can get them. Yeah, but I don't know... Okay, yeah, I'll just get out of the toilet. (laughs) I just didn't know if the the (laughs) wife likes the small one. You know what I mean? I love that you're like, but then the toilet has to go. Yeah. Like, it's it's not even a question. Well, the toilet is the cheapest, easiest fix. Yeah. The other things... the. But day's more expensive and the getting the power there. Yeah. I mean toilet's a hundred dollars, I think. hundred and fifty bucks. Right. Maybe two hundred dollars for a nice one. Like they're not expensive. No, not at all. It's full on worth it. And how much I mean, was yours? That's what I was saying. I think it was like about six hundred dollars. I mean it was it's a pricey one, but it's yeah. got it's worth it. It's yeah. got every option that I need. You know, the only thing it does it doesn't do is raise the lid when I walk in the bathroom, which yeah. would probably get annoying, like taking yeah, a shower yeah, and I'm watching the lid. That. Plus, it's something else to go wrong. Like, I got yeah, enough yeah, technology yeah. Enough in, under my parts. ass. I'm just like, I don't need that. But honestly, I think it's got every feature that I need. That yeah. that heated seat. The other night, I had like a bubble guts incident where I had to run in and use a different toilet. And I sat down and I was shocked at how cold it was. Yeah. I couldn't, because I haven't sat on a cold toilet. How does it know? How When does it warm it up? Well, it has like energy savers if you want to, mm-hmm. where it'll just stay warm for like ninety minutes or sixty minutes after the last person sat on it, mm-hmm. or you can just leave that bitch on all the time. Oh, okay. And for a long time, I did the ninety minutes, but then I realized the middle of the night ones were cold, and that's eh, unacceptable. Yeah. So I just leave the power on yeah. all the time now. How long does it take to warm up? Oh, I mean, you turn it on and it's warm. So like if I feel like, one coming, can I go turn it on? Oh, you could if you wanted to use energy savers. Sure. Sure, probably within two minutes it'd be warm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you turn it on, when you sit down, yeah, within a minute it's warm oh, okay. under you. But I just, I just, you know, it's America. I like to have power surging through my toilet seat yeah. at all times. For sure. I want to make sure that it's warm. It's probably and, really efficient. Probably doesn't yeah. burn up too much. It's the only feature, because my wife refuses to touch the remote. Refuses. Really? She's so stubborn. She's like, I will never use that thing. Really? But- since I can't, since I have the the heated That's seat. That's weird. To, 
Oh, she's just she's stubborn, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like trying to prove you wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Like she thinks that, that Tesla, I'm not driving that thing. Yeah. It's like she thinks that somehow if she holds out and just keeps sticking her hand in her butt, that over ten years I'm gonna go, You were right? Yeah. yeah. No. No. Never. You were wrong. But she can't turn off the heated part. Yeah. And she will be like, I do like how warm the seat is. Oh, so like she's come around to that. Yeah. Wait till like, you get heated water. That's step well, one of twenty amazing steps to the journey to Nirvana. It's gonna be right. in like she's gonna be so wrong because it won't be long before that's just standard. Yeah. That will be standard. It's the number one thing that interior designers, when they're redoing a bathroom, insist on right now. Like they did a survey the other day, and it was the number one thing. Like put in a a, yeah. a washlet. It's phenomenal. Yeah, that's great. I'm just so glad to see that you've used it now because it's all just been me just just hyping it up. Yeah, and I'm like, this isn't hype. There's no hyperbole in this. Like this, this is, is that great. good. It's a, that's awesome. It'll change everything. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm so glad you got a chance to use it. I mean, I was like, no, no, we'll pause. We'll yeah. pause. Like, we'll get, let's let's get you upstairs. <laughs> Good call. And Delhi. Oh, That's yeah. All right. Zero a, to five. Uh, hmm, that's a good question. That's a fiver. Oh! <laughs> it's, it's got this. I would buy that again. We need a Delhi <laughs> to ring the bell on. There yeah. you go. You know, I didn't really have any hop taste left in my mouth after <laughs> yeah. that. And it was no. perfect. Right. That's oh, awesome. Yeah, we that got to great. witness it. Oh, we got I to can't witness wait. It I want to go time. back in. I got to try it out, man. Yeah, you should get one brewing right now. I'm, I'm working, working on, on I'm it. Trying. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, it's got. doing some squats. It's gotten <laughs> to the point. Like, like when I drink Coke Zeros, I don't know why, but it just, it bubble guts me up fast. And so I've actually gotten rid of Coke Zero like six days a week. Yesterday we went out out to lunch. I was like, "Hey, do you guys have Coke Zero by chance?" And I drank four of them, and I knew that I was going to pay dearly, and not just in that day, but probably into the next day. And I was like, "What a great fate!" <laughs> <laughs> it was my so totally worth. I drank it. four. My wife's like, "You're just chugging those down." I was like, "I know, I know." And we went to Home Depot, and I was in there for like 15 minutes. For I was like. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go. Like, uh, ran out, and I've probably gotten to hang out up there quite a bit, and it's been very glorious. Enjoyable. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Lucky Congrats. You. Like I'm intentionally poisoning myself. Yeah, like, like this is gonna make me crap. <laughs> right. <laughs> I might just take up smoking again. Just to there be you up go. The, yeah. just coffee and a cigarette. Yeah. Just an ashtray. There's one ashtray next to the junkie. toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's perfect. Finding veins yeah, on your coffee. Bed. Coffee would do it for sure. Yeah. Yes. I just have I'm, a, I'm putting an espresso machine in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just sit here and drink it. <laughs> just drink mm-hmm. coffee, smoke cigarettes. Runs right through you. Yeah. Oh. I'm in heaven. <laughs> I'll be looking at those. I'm glad you got to check it out. I'm mm-hmm. glad you got to check it out. In fact, I'll uh I'll do you a solid, no pun intended. <laughs> and uh, I'll go ahead and end this show so you can start searching okay. right now. Because I do Preach. think that's probably in uh, in your best interest. You need to get one of those. I know. If you already have power there, I do. Like it's it's inexcusable that people are still wiping their butts. Twenty nineteen. I think you're right. Blows my mind. Um, though, thank you're doing you guys. It wrong. So, thank doing you guys it so wrong. much for tuning into the show week in and week out. We do appreciate you being here. And would absolutely love you to Cincinnati swap some people, sign up some other people. If you haven't had a chance to head over to Ely's Pet Project on YouTube, which I think we're heading in the right direction there, yeah, go on over, subscribe to that channel. And uh, if you see a clip you like, I think we're going to start having clips of like better segments coming up. Maybe share those. See if you can help us get some traction. It's going to be the Cincinnati swap on steroids. If you get a chance to send us some topics, please do so. Inside the Pallet House at gmail.com. You can always hit us up on Twitter or Instagram at ITPH Podcast, or you can always find us on the Facebook page. I know one of us will be checking it every so often. Love to hear what you have to say. And, uh, if you have videos, everyone but Josh, send them in. <laughs> you know, Love to hear from you. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the support. We will be talking to you soon. Cheers. Cheers. That was a pretty good podcast, don't you think?
that was a pretty good bidet, don't you think? 